Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon from Scar Illustration and I hope you're keeping well. Today I'm going to talk about my process for creating the Landing Party Creative Sketch, as well as a couple of new things that happened along the way. Let's dive in. To start off, I quickly roughed in a random background. And then I worked on getting the character silhouette right before adding any details. Pretty early on, I decided that it was going to be a sci-fi scene, and the main character would be either a soldier or perhaps a mercenary of sorts, searching for survivors or some sort of bounty, perhaps. Then I added some spaceships in the sky behind the character to further suggest some story elements and narrative, as these will then inform some of my choices going forward. While I was building the different elements, I chose to use a fairly monotone palette, and there were two reasons for this. The first was to make things a bit easier to create without worrying about other elements, such as color choices or rendering. And the second reason was so that I could change things quickly if needed. Once I was happy with the overall composition of the sketch, I slowly started adding in some color notes, as well as working on the lighting of the sketch. I'm also flipping the sketch to catch any glaring mistakes that I've missed up to this point. While I was working on the figure, I had the idea that he should have some sort of eye enhancement, a bit like the Terminator Red Eye, but a different color. I then started to think about how to best design the lighting so as to accentuate this feature, and decided that I would most likely have the character's head in shadow. After that, it was time to start fleshing out the character a bit more by adding some suggestive details. I knew this was just going to be a sketch at this stage, so I didn't want to spend a lot of time rendering out different areas of the character. It would totally work so long as I had the basic ideas down. Then it was on to focusing a bit more on the environment. For this, I mostly used a textured chalk brush. I wanted to give the impression that the rocks and ground were fairly rough, which I also achieved with the type of brush strokes I chose to use. I also wanted to start pushing the overall value and contrast of the sketch, as it was feeling a little flat at this stage. So I added a somewhat harsh reflection on the stream and then it was back on to developing the main character. I liked the overall direction that the facial features were going, but it still felt a little bit too vague. As well as that, I wanted to accentuate the orange fill light on the character so as to make the shadow areas a bit more interesting. Once I had added a bit more detail, I decided to add a few more figures in the background to push the narrative of the piece. Creating these types of figures is a fine balance between adding in too much or too little detail so that they'll read well. I also wanted the gestures to suggest that they were on alert and actively searching for someone or something, whilst making sure that they were pushed back into distance so as to not compete with the foreground elements. I wanted the design of the shadow shapes to support the lighting and gestures of the figures as well. For the background rocks, I tried a couple of new techniques. The first was an angular hard brush that I was inspired to create after watching some other painting tutorials. I turned on the color dynamics option, which is something I never really use which gave the brush strokes an interesting texture for things such as rocks or fabric, but it also looks a bit like oil paints. And the second new thing that I used was custom shapes. 
I'm pretty late to the party with these as I tend to just paint everything in myself, which, depending on what I'm painting, can be pretty laborious and time consuming. After watching a couple of tutorials, I went ahead and started creating some custom rock brushes. For some of the custom brushes I used, I just made some random shapes which I used for things like reflections or shadow areas. But for the rest, I created from photos that I found online. I put the pattern created by the custom brush near that I wanted it to go, and then used the transform tool to get the textures to look right in the space. I then added a quick mask, inverted it so that everything disappeared, and painted back in some of the texture where needed. Not only did this save me a lot of rendering time, but it also looked really good, if not better, than when I had spent time painting it all out. The result of using both of these techniques is that the background areas looked more suggestive and painterly, and they seemed to fit in with the sketch more. Once that was done, it was time to go back to the main character and start developing his facial features a bit more. For this stage, I went and found some decent reference so as to get all the elements to look a bit more lifelike but I still wanted to retain some of the blocky brush strokes. Next, it was on to painting the enhanced eye area. As you can see, I tried out various different color schemes. I didn't want to go with the generic red eye effect, as I think that's kind of been done to death at this point. So I decided to try out something a bit different. Once that was done, I went ahead and pushed the contrast between the light and shadow areas on the figure, as well as sharpening up some of the details which I achieved with that angled hard brush. This brush actually came in really handy for a lot of the details in the painting overall, especially for carving out some of the light shapes on the rocky areas. For the foreground water areas, I decided to try and employ some of the brush strokes that I used when I created the Craig Mullins Master Study. I wanted the motion of the water to be generally described, but at the same time, I didn't want there to be too much detail so as to take away from the main character. With this creative sketch, I wanted to try out a few new techniques, from tutorials that I'd watched, as well as things that I learned whilst creating some recent master studies. It was fun to just get caught up in another world for a while, without having to worry about trying to make everything look perfect. I also enjoy doing these as I can finish them relatively quickly, which is a nice contrast to some of my more finished, highly detailed paintings, which generally take a lot longer to complete. Hope this was helpful, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Please consider liking this video and subscribe to my channel. Have a good one, and keep on painting!